Minasan, konnichiwa, Samurai Engineers. In this uh, video, let us continue with chapter six about cost, volume, profit relationships. So we have uh, a discussion in module number two right now. So let us uh, continue. So our learning goal for this uh, module is to be able to prepare and interpret a cost volume profit CVP graph and a profit graph. CVP graph and a profit graph. Okay. Prepare and interpret. So it's a very important thing that uh, we know how to do it and also we know how to uh, take out the meaning from its uh, graph. CVP, relationships in graphic form. The relationships among revenue, cost, profit, and volume can be expressed graphically by preparing a CVP graph of uh, RBC, RBC is our example company. This is the racing bike uh, company developed contribution margin income statements at zero, 200, 400, and 600 unit sold. We will use this information to prepare the CVP graph. Okay. So continuation of our previous uh, example. So therefore we already have familiarity and some knowledge about it. So we have uh, again the table of a given uh, data about the amount in terms of total and in terms of unit. Road sales, total uh, variable expenses, contribution margin, fixed expenses and net income or loss. For what? It depends upon on our different amount of units sold. So in this table, we have zero units sold, 200, 400 and 600 units sold. Okay, let us uh, do the graph, preparing the CVP graph. CVP graph uh, is uh, number of units versus dollars. In CVP graph, unit volume is usually represented on horizontal axis. Okay, volume meaning how many units. So when we say volume, not the engineering concept of volume really, but the volume means amount, number of products. If we are talking on uh, the production uh, lines. Okay, so it has the same uh, concept anyway, but uh, the physical uh, manifestation is different. So in general, we talk of volume as uh, length, width, times height. That is a volume, but in uh, our um, production line or industrial area, manufacturing lines, manufacturing process, our company, look at the volume as the number of units or pieces, how many number of pieces. So that is uh, the horizontal axis and for the uh, vertical axis, we want to grab the dollars or the amount, either it is in pesos or dollars or in any other currency. So in this example, uh, wherein we have to continue the RBC example, which is racing by company, we have the following. So let us uh, start to make uh, the preparation for doing the graph. Preparing the CBP graph, 
Step number one, draw a line parallel to the volume axis to represent total fixed expenses. Because that is a fixed expenses, it will not change. That's why we have to draw it perfectly horizontal. That is the meaning of constant or fixed. Fixed means constant and we know from engineering that we grab constant value as to be horizontal axis or as a parallel line as the horizontal axis. Now, in this graph, we did draw it in red color. As you can see, there are several points uh, connecting, making this a red color. But the points are from 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Okay? Fixed expenses. This represents fixed expenses, which is, uh, as you can see, the fixed expenses is less than 100,000, but more than 50,000. It is uh, more than 75,000. So about 80 or something, 80,000 something. Okay, so that is our given data. You can look at the data and draw the estimated straight line in that, okay? To represent our fixed asset. Okay, next uh, on our slide is uh, step two, wherein we have to choose some sales volume, say 400 units, okay? Usually, if uh, we have to be very critical about it, we have to, it is preferable. My, my technique, I prefer to use the, the maximum uh, number of sold items from the historical data. What is the maximum? For example, the maximum is uh, 600. So I will uh, look for the 600 rather than the 400. But anyway, uh, doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. That is uh, my my technique because there is an, there is a very engineering reason why I do it. But if you can do it accurately and precisely, it doesn't matter. Even if you choose the 400 units or 600 units or the maximum number of units or uh, anywhere in between. Okay, and plot the point representing the total expenses, fixed and variable. Okay, we have to plot the points. Draw a line through the data point back to where the fixed expenses line intersects the line axis. Okay, so that's why here you can see this point, that is the intersection of red line and the vertical axis, okay? That is the intersection. That is where we have to draw a line from this point, which is, which is the 400 units volume. This is the amount of dollar wherein we we are able to what? We're able to sell 400 units, this amount of dollar, that is amounting to what? 200,000 dollars. From 200,000 dollars, we have to do, to uh, project a ruler, using a ruler, and then draw the straight line, the straight line going to the intersection. So it is uh, just a matter of writing it down or uh, sketching the line. And this, in this case, we're able to draw the blue line connecting the point uh, 400, $200,000, that is coordinate, of, the coordinate of the point. 400 and $200,000, that is the coordinate. And going to uh, the intersection of red line and the vertical axis. Okay, that is our second step. And 
step one and step two are uh, very, very much uh, basic. Okay. And then step three, choose some sales volume, say 400 units, and plot the point representing the total sales. Draw a line through the data point back to the point of origin rather than going to the point of intersection of red and vertical. Now we are going from uh, the point 400 and 200 thousand dollars going back to the from this point from this point going back to the origin and uh, here we are able to draw green line so that is a green line so that is what we call the total sales okay so green is the total sales, blue is the total expenses, meaning that uh, is a fixed plus variable. And red is the fixed expenses. Please uh, take note of those representation. So red represent fixed expenses, blue represent total expenses equals to which is equals to fixed and variable expenses. And the green line represents sales. Okay. So let us give meaning of preparing the, the coordinates. So look for the break even point. So our uh, Next step is look for the break even point. Break even point, as any, as everybody already know, because it is already explained, break even point as a review is the point wherein we get zero income, meaning our total sales is just equal to total expenses. And in this graph, you will notice green uh, line is the total sales and blue line is total expenses if the blue line and green line is equal to each other if they if they are equal to each other therefore there is zero income okay zero income because all of the sales will be just used for expenses so there is no uh, money left for profit okay so because of that because they are equal this means in the graph they are the same height where in the graph they are the same height or they intersect they are the same height when they are intersecting so blue and green intersect at that point what is that point that is uh, exactly equal to 400 units and $200,000. So that is the break-even point. And uh, because of that, you will notice that the green line is below. The green line is below the blue line. When you are looking at the two lines from zero to 400, the green line is always below the blue line from zero to 400 units. Look, look at the graph. And because green is less than or below the blue line in this area, that represents the uh, instances that the business is uh, having losses because sale is less than the expenses. The, we expend more than we earn. We spend more than we earn. So there is a series of losses in there from uh, zero to 400 units. So if we sell any number of units between zero to four hundred. For example, we had 80 
units sold. Therefore, it still loses because it is between zero and 400. Okay, even 399, we still have losses because it is still less than 400. Okay, meaning the green line is still below the blue line. However, you can observe if the green line is over or above the blue line, there is a profit because the green line is the amount of sales and blue line is the total expenses. So if uh, there are many units sold and there are only small amount of expenses, therefore we have a bigger profit. So as you will notice, as uh, the uh, line goes away from the break-even point, meaning break-even point is 400, if we sell more and more number of units, we will get more and more profit. The same is true on the other side. If we are uh, not able to sell or we are just able to sell less and less number of units, we will have more and more losses. Okay. That is the meaning of this. For example, if we just uh, sold 100 units, this is the amount for the sales, which is what, 50,000, and our and our expenses, the, uh, the blue line here is more than 100,000. It is about 120,000. So, therefore, if we expend, if we spend 120,000 and we just uh, able to sell 50,000, so there are about what? About 70,000 uh, dollars loss on that kind of case. However, if we are just able to sell 200, okay, we have what? 100,000. 100,000 sales, but we spend what? How many? About 240. About 140,000. We spend about 140. So therefore, still, we have losses. But now, the losses is smaller, getting smaller. Because uh, previously, on the 100 units, the losses is 70,000. But now the losses is what? 140 minus 100, that is only 40. Okay? So 70,000 is uh, bigger than uh, 4,000. So therefore, we have a losses, but still uh, the losses are smaller and smaller as we are able to sell more and more. So if we uh, sell more units, for example, 300 units, still we have a loss, but the loss is now very small. So maybe this is uh, 170 minus 150, only about 20 losses, 20,000 losses, okay? And if you sell 400 units, so that is the uh, instant wherein the total sales is equal to total expenses, and therefore, we have zero income. But we also have zero losses. Okay? So the same is true. If we are able to solve 500 units, our uh, sales would be about 250,000, uh, while our uh, total expense is about 230,000. So there uh, there is about what? 20. Okay, about 20,000. Um, dollars uh, income. This time it is a profit, not a loss. Okay, so this uh, means 
we are becoming productive. Okay. So let us uh, <clears throat> add another information. Profit is equal to unit uh, CM times Q minus fixed. An even simpler form of CVP graph is called the profit graph. Okay, so we have what? CVP graph and uh, an alternative is profit graph. Or in we have what? Equation of profit is equal to unit CM or uh, contribution margin, CM is contribution margin times Q minus fixed. Fixed expenses. So we also have a zero break even point here. So in this uh, type of graph, we still have what? Uh, vertical for the amount and horizontal for the or the volume for the units okay so still for the horizontal zero 100 200 300 400 500 600 and so on number of units but you'll notice now in the uh, profit zero profit is established corresponding to the point or to the number of units wherein if you sold that number of units you will get zero points that is what that is the break even point okay and you'll notice below the break even point of zero profit negative amount of dollars are, are indicated okay while up upwards from a zero profit we have 20 000, 40 60,000 these are positive so therefore uh, above we have what income and below we have losses because we are in neg negative. Okay, so this is how we prepare the uh, CVP graph and the profit graph. Okay. Now the profit graph is just the unit contribution margin times Q. Q is the number of units minus fixed expenses. That is the CVP graph. That is the profit graph. Profit graph meaning this one, this red, this red uh, curve here is a profit graph. Okay, because this profit graph utilized what? The profit equation. Again, for the last time, the profit equation is equal to P profit is equal to unit contribution margin times Q minus fixed expenses. Okay. Any question? This uh, should be our last slide for this module. Use our comment box below if you have anything to say. If you have question. Okay. So again, uh, this, uh, this is Dr. E.P. Preaching Engineering for Nation Building.